الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We are continuing non-communicable disease epidemiology and prevention by Professor Mahmoud Hani Sulaim. I begin this lecture with ischemic heart disease. The definition of ischemic heart disease is impairment of heart perfusion compared to its need, which is due to narrowing of vessels. Decreased of heart perfusion compared to its need due to narrowing of vessels. It may take form of angina, myocardial infarction, heart failure, or sudden cardiac death. It is either angina, myocardial infarction, heart failure, or sudden cardiac death. What is the magnitude of the problem? In most Western countries, about one third of all deaths in males and one quarter in females are due to ischemic heart disease. Case fatality 55% in first hour, then more than one quarter in 20 days. It eats about 3.4 to 9.4 years of life expectancy in males and the greater in females. Ischemic heart disease are a modern epidemic due to, due to lifetime of bad habits. After sweeping developed countries, CHD is on decline, although still very prevalent there, there in Western countries, but affecting more developing countries. Ischemic heart diseases have 18 years of lag period between behavioral change and onset of disease. This curve shows incidence of ischemic heart disease with increased blood pressure in four groups of people. Blood pressure always a risk factor. So this is a curve, the first one for smoking and high cholesterol and this the x axis is for blood pressure and this y axis is four percent if there is smoking and the high cholesterol this is the blood pressure if high cholesterol this is the curve if smokers, this is the curve, this is the normal. So this is the normal. Risk factors for coronary heart disease, I will give some details about some of them. These are the risk factors for coronary heart disease. Hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, smoking, excessive alcohol intake, being physically inactive, unhealthy diet, being overweight or obese, excessive stress, aging, being male, for women, postmenopausal, and genetics. These are CVDs and toxic causes. Mostly these causes are occupational. For cardiac arrhythmia, arsenic, chlorofluorocarbon, propellants, hydrocarbon solvents, organophosphate, and carbamate. Cardiac arrhythmia. For coronary artery disease, air pollution, carbon disulfide, carbon monoxide, lead is query. This is for coronary artery disease. For hypertension, cadmium, carbon disulfide, and lead. For myocardial asphyxiation, carbon monoxide, cyanide, and hydrogen sulfide. For myocardial injury, antimony, arsenic, arsine, cobalt, lead. 
for non-atheromatous ischemic heart disease organic nitrates for example nitroglycerin and ethylene glycol dinitrate for peripheral arterial occlusive disease arsenic cadmium and lead this scheme shows how a socioeconomic status which is composed of occupation income and education can lead at the end to coronary heart disease this is by affecting environment health behavior and psychosocial factors which these three affect physical factors and mental factors again these affect the biology of the human leading to at the end coronary heart disease agent this lipidemia of all lipids ldl cholesterol is most directly related to hid ischemic heart disease ldl directly related hid current rules is to screen for blood lipids in all adults over 20 the screen include fasting lipid profile which uh, composed of total cholesterol triglycerides ldl cholesterol and hdl cholesterol repeated every five years apoB and apoA are probably better indicators than lipoprotein themselves lipid goal lipid goal this is important ldl less than 160 ldl less than 160 total cholesterol per hdl less than 3.5 3.5 for hdl the goal is more than 45 again for ldl less than 160 for total cholesterol ratio to HDL less than 3.5 for HDL more than 45 milligram per deciliter more than for HDL more than smoking smoking is unique human habit but reversible risk factor it is reversible so you can include it in the plan for prevention and control of HID. Smoking lead to atherogenesis by releasing carbon monoxide and increased sympathetic tone and possibly also by endothelial damage and setting up microinflammation inside this. Cholesterol is synergistic synergistic risk factor showing risk of ischemic heart disease with increased blood pressure in four groups of people i showed you this in this graph at the beginning of this lecture tobacco problem in egypt tobacco control is a major challenge in egypt with around quarter of adults using tobacco products about half of population exposed to second hand smoke in their own homes this is very high there is increased trend of young females uptake of tobacco and overall increase in shisha used around among females and males tobacco is a driving force in increasing epidemic of chronic disease in egypt as lung disease lung cancer ischemic heart disease and stroke This is the household aged 0 to 19 years regularly exposed to smoking inside the dwelling by background characteristic at 2015. More than half of this age group is exposed to this hazardous material. Efforts to control tobacco in Egypt, increase in tobacco taxation, tobacco cessation hotline established the number written on cigarette packs tobacco ban on advertising made but indirect advertising is widespread through depictions of tobacco use in film and drama 
Moves made to provide smoke-free public environments, but enforcement remains weak. This picture shows reduction in the risk of lung cancer in British doctors years after stopping cigarette smoking, in comparison to risk in doctors who continue smoking. This long bar is the continuous smokers, and this is the excess smokers. Hypertension is the, it is the strongest risk factor for ischemic heart disease. Hypertension is the strongest risk factor for ischemic heart disease. So it must be part of plan to prevent and control ischemic heart disease to reduce, to find those who had hypertension and to reduce blood pressure in them. CVD risk doubles for every 10 millimeter increase in the systolic pressure or 20, mi 20 millimeter increase in uh, systolic pressure. Diabetes mellitus, insulin resistance, and metabolic syndrome, all are risk factors for ischemic heart disease. Most patients of diabetes die of atherosclerosis and its complications. Aging and increased obesity underlie current epidemic of type 2 diabetes. Abnormal lipoprotein profile associated with insulin resistance, known as diabetic dyslipidemia. Abnormal lipoprotein profile associated with insulin resistance called diabetic dyslipidemia, which will lead to partly increased CVD risk in patients with type 2 diabetes. While diabetic patients have LDL cholesterol near average, LDL particles are smaller, denser, denser, and more atherogenic. There are also low HDL and high triglycerides. Hypertension accompanies diabetes, and this cluster of risk of factor is now known as metabolic syndrome. Diabetes mellitus may lead to silent acute myocardial infarction. Target is to keep sugar less than 120 and the blood pressure less than 130 over 85 millimeter mercury, of course. The metabolic syndrome, any three risk factors of abdominal obesity, BMI more than 30, triglycerides more than 150, LDL cholesterol, I, sorry, HDL cholesterol in males less than 40, in females less than 50, blood pressure systolic more than 130, diastolic more than 85, fasting glucose more than 110. Any three of these is called metabolic syndrome. It is about abdominal obesity. BMI, triglyceride, HDL, blood pressure, and fasting glucose. Male sex postmenopausal state. Male sex is a risk factor. Postmenopausal state in a woman is a risk factor. Decades of studies have verified excess coronary risk in men compared with premenopausal women. After menopause, however, both become equal. Also, estrogen found to increase HDL and decrease LDL. This regulated coagulation or fibrinogen, it is another risk factor. Fibrinogen levels correlate with coronary risk. Lipoprotein A, lipoprotein modulates fibrinolysis and is a risk factor too. The risk factors for uh, ischemic heart disease exclusive of LDL cholesterol, smoking, hypertension, HDL, diabetes, family history, age, obesity, alcohol, male sex postmenopausal uh, with uh, maybe taking in premenopausal taking oral contraceptive, type A personality lack of dietary fibers, 
deficiency of polyunsaturated fatty acids too much salt all these are ischemical disease risk factors here to summarize them how to prevent IHD primordial prevention preserve traditional food habits this is primordial prevention this is secondary prevention this is tertiary prevention primordial prevention preserve traditional food habits implement dietary goals avoid the initiating of smoking fast foods cola and candies schools play the most important role in primordial prevention primary prevention for everybody in the population specific protection prudent diet abstinence abstinence from smoking and alcohol do not take smoke or alcohol control of stress and hypertension secondary prevention for those with the risk factors screening for hypertension hypercholesterolemia diabetes medical management of such diseases screening is recommended each five years in all adults over 20 because treatment of an acute episode of IHD is costly and not successful in many cases setting up more ICUs is not an effective community intervention tertiary prevention lifelong beta blockers and aspirin angioplasty extended benefit under employees state insurance now i will talk about epidemiology and the prevention of hypertension these are definitions of hypertension normal systolic less than 120 while diastolic less than 20 80 hypertension between 120 and less than 140 while diastolic between 80 and less than 90 stage 1 hypertension 140 to less than 160 while diastolic is 90 to less than 100 S stage 2 hypertension more than 160 and diastolic more than 100 what is the magnitude of the problem in most countries up to 30 percent of adults suffer from high blood pressure and further more than 50 percent would be in better health if reduced their blood pressure in egypt prevalence of pre-hypertension is 54 43 among both men and women respectively while hypertension percent is 18 and 15 among the same sexes types of hypertension primary essential renal endocrine and other primary essential this is the greatest part of hypertension increase with age obesity high salt intake decreased dietary fibers psychosocial stress is often inherited and is being more in lower socioeconomic class renal acute or chronic glomerulonephritis renal artery stenosis endocrines OCP intake adrenocortical hyperfunction pheochromocytoma others coarctation of aorta toxemia of pregnancy white coat hypertension i.e. on seeing a doctor prevention of hypertension primary prevention population strategy what is the population strategy for primary prevention of hypertension follow dietary goals by WHO decrease salt intake less than 5 gram per day weight reduction physical exercise increase it changes in lifestyle to adopt stress high risk strategy tracking of blood pressure shows people with initial blood pressure closer to threshold to have more chance to develop hypertension over years people with one or more risk factors should be 
educated on consequences and management of increased blood pressure, provision of self-check blood pressure machines way and increase their involvement in management, involvement of people. Secondary prevention for hypertension. Screening for hypertension is not fruit, fruitful as blood pressure varies between observers and even the time of the day. A blood pressure of every person visiting healthcare measured it serves as screening. Following schedule should be followed if hypertension is diagnosed. Measure blood pressure thrice, history, duration, history of treatment, family history, other diseases, lifestyle, general survey, systemic examination, including fundoscopy, lab, ECG, urinalysis, serum, electrolytes, urea, creatinine, fasting glucose, cholesterol, HDL. Treatment of hypertension, uh, ask internal medicine. Now I'm going to talk about epidemiology and prevention of cerebrovascular accident stroke. Rapidly developing clinical signs of focal or global disruption of cerebral circulation lasting more than 24 hours or leading to death with no apparent cause other than vascular phenomena. A stroke carries a high risk of death. Survivors can experience loss of vision and or speech paralysis and confusion. Historically called apoplexy, a stroke is so called because of the way it strikes people down. So its definition is clinical signs of focal or global disruption of cerebral circulation lasting more than 24 hours or leading to death. Asian ischemic stroke due to thrombosis or embolism of vessel, hemorrhagic stroke usually due to hypertension. What are the host factors? Ill age, Ill male sex, frequently diabetic, smoker, hyperlipidemia, women who use OCPs. However, modern dose OCPs bear little risk for stroke. Prevention of stroke, even where advanced diagnostic and therapeutic facilities are available, 60% of all those who suffer a stroke either die or live with some disability. Thus, curative treatment is not a viable option for decreased deaths or DALY loss from stroke. Continued prevention of stroke, primary prevention, control hypertension, control diabetes, stop smoking, health education about risk factors, the secondary prevention, early detection of stroke, tertiary prevention through rehabilitation. Now I will talk about epidemiology and the prevention of rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease. Please read streptococcal infection before listening to this lecture. Rheumatic heart disease, it is commonest heart disease in the age group 5 to 30 years, but it does not stop there and goes on to produce valvular disease which lead to lifetime disability. An estimated 6.6 .6 multiplied by 106 DALYs were lost due to rheumatic fever in 2000 worldwide. Rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease decreased in prevalence in advanced industrialized nations. In developing world, RF and RHD, although less prevalent than they were in the age group 30, to 50 years ago are still major health problems. Poor socioeconomic standards and difficulty of reaching proper primary health care facilities are main cause of a still relatively high prevalence. Poor socioeconomic standard 
and difficulty in reaching primary health care. This map shows reported worldwide prevalence of rheumatic disease during the period 1970 to 1990. As you see here, in Egypt, it is more than 10 cases per 1,000 persons. It was. This map showing reported worldwide prevalence of rheumatic heart disease from 1991 till now. As you see, in Egypt, it, it now it is from 4 to 10 cases per 1,000 persons. And you can find your country what is case. What about the agent causing rheumatic heart disease and, and rheumatic fever? Group A, beta, hemolytic, streptococci, many types, 1, 3, 5, 6, 14, 18, 19, and 24, associated with rheumatic fever. Antigenic variation in this bacteria prohibit development of a vaccine. Host, commonest in children of both sexes between 5 to 15 years. Every known type of carrier present for streptococci, which makes eradication an impossibility. Impossible to eradicate. Environment. Poverty, malnutrition, overcrowding, poor housing, lack of awareness. The environment is responsible to continuation of this disease, rheumatic uh, fever. Poverty, malnutrition, overcrowding, poor housing, lack of awareness. What is the clinical course of this disease? These are revised zones of criteria to diagnose rheumatic heart disease. Measure carditis, Sydenham, Korea, subcutaneous nodules, polyarthritis, erythema marginata. These are the major. The minor are fever, polyarthralgia, Increase, increased ESR, increased WBCs count, increased PR interval in ECG. Others, increased PR interval, increased antistreptolysin or titer, uh, uh, positive throat culture, rapid antigen test for group A beta hemolytic streptococcus, history of scarlet fever. Why I am uh, mentioning this because through this we can diagnose rheumatic heart and take the preventive measures. This is the diagnostic chart for rheumatic fever. So two major or one major and two minor With evidence of group A streptococcal infection, we, you can say this is rheumatic fever. If two major, one major plus one minor with evidence of group A streptococcal recurrent rheumatic fever without rheumatic heart disease, if it recurs. If you find one major and two minors, and evidence of group A streptococcal infection, this is recurrent rheumatic fever with rheumatic heart disease. Prevention of rheumatic heart disease. Primary prevention, health promotion through better housing, alleviating poverty, overcrowding, educating people on hygiene. Still, in primary prevention but the specific prevention each member of community should do throat swab test because it is not actually possible we concentrate on high risk groups school children and perform screening 
for uh, by throat swab for streptococcal infection. Secondary prevention of rheumatic heart disease. Every case of rheumatic fever, we, we mentioned that they have to diagnose rheumatic fever. Every case of rheumatic fever given benzocene penicillin in this dose, this dose is in children, and in others, this dose. Enter mascari every three weeks for five years, or when child reaches 18 years whichever is earlier. Yeah, but rheumatic fever, it is for five years or till 18 years. For rheumatic carditis, it is taken for 10 years or till 25 years of age, whichever is earlier. So for rheumatic fever, it is for, for five years. For rheumatic carditis, at least 10 years. For severe valve involvement, treatment with benzocene penicillin can continue lifelong. So three durations, three different regulations according to the diagnosis, which is made by criteria of Jones. This is why criteria of Jones is, in, is important. We focus only on cases of rheumatic fever. Secondary prevention is much more practicable than primary prevention, tertiary prevention, symptomatic treatment and valve replacement of rheumatic heart disease cases, penicillin must be continued long after surgery. Thank you for your good listening.